So I'm sure you've heard of this. Um, you've heard of lukewarm, yeah, being lukewarm. You've read the verse that says that if you are lukewarm, God will spew you out of his mouth. Um. <laughs> Revelation 3 verse 16. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Many times you hear pastors come to Christians and say, Ask yourself, are you lukewarm? If you are lukewarm, God will spit you out of his mouth. Be hot for God. Be on fire for God. You're not on fire. You see that? Can you say that with me this morning? On fire. You got to stay. You got to stay on fire for the Lord. And if you are not on fire, then you might lose your warmth. You have to be on fire. Fire. Or else you'll probably lose your salvation or something. Because uh, God can't deal with wishy-washy Christians, lukewarm Christians, right? So you must be on fire, right? So on today's video, we're going to look at the context of this. We normally don't use Revelation as a doctrinal book. But since this passage is used to promote fear, we're going to look at it today. All right? So, yeah. Fire. Hi, guys. My name is Billy, and I'm the administrator of the Father's Love for You online ministry that focuses on God's love for you. Yeah, so check us out on all social media. So, yeah, that's me. That's my assistant over there. Hello. Her name is Mini, you know. Yeah, we all need assistance, yeah. You all need that special someone in your life, right? Yeah, so that's <laughs> let's be serious, all right? Let's uh, let's get serious. Let's be hot. We we should be on fire for God, right? Fire. So today we're going to look at Revelation 3, 14 to 21. It's where the passage of being lukewarm comes from. So let's have a quick read on it. To the angel of the church in Laodicea. Um, the angel of the church means the pastor of the church. John is writing to the pastor. Yeah, This is what the Lord has for the pastor of that church. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you are cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. And you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich and white garment so that you may clothe yourself and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed. And I to serve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love I reprove and discipline. Therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and will dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I will grant him to sit down with me on my throne. So that's the context of Revelation 3, 14 to 20. You can already tell that these guys are not Christians. Um, they're not believers. Obviously, for, for him to say, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears and opens the door, I will come in. Clearly, the door has not been opened. Jesus is knocking, but the majority have not opened the door. So this verse is clearly to some unbelievers. But some of you may argue, he says to the angel of the church, yeah, to the pastor of the church. Yes, um... You can be in church and not be a believer. Not all people inside the church are believers. You know that's true, right? And so that seems to be the case here. Another thing that shows us that the church in Laodicea might have unbelievers is uh, the wretched and the naked, the blind. These are not terms used for believers. More proof that he's talking to unbelievers. You might need a little Bible typology here. In the Bible, um, colors, red, blue, green, yellow, gold, silver, 
all these have meaning so keep that in mind while we read this again i advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich gold in the bible is a picture of righteousness so jesus is telling them to buy righteousness from him come to him and let him be your righteousness so these are not believers these people don't even have christ as their righteousness as we saw earlier jesus is outside knocking He's not inside. He's outside knocking, trying to get in. So that's the situation in this church. And white garments so that you may clothe yourself. Yeah, you know white garments obviously means the righteousness. He clothes us in righteousness. So this is a church that is not clothed in righteousness. None at all. Let me tell you the worst way to look at it, um, the most foolish way to look at this verse, and unfortunately, it's the most common way they look at it. So they come and say, you must be on fire for God, yeah? You must be hot for God. Fire! By hot, they mean you must be super zealous um, and not be apathetic, for example. yeah. To be on fire for God, you must preach more, you must share more, you must evangelize more, you must get people saved, Right? And that's how you're on fire for God. Fire! Read the Bible every day. Um, pray every day. And, um, you know, share your faith. Do good stuff. Help charity. And that's a Christian who's on fire for God. Let me tell you why that's a foolish thing, right? How are you measuring fire for God? Do you have to get 10 people saved? Because I assure you, there's someone who got 1,000 people saved. Must you give 80% to charity? Because there are people who give 100% to charity. Your level of fire, your level of hot to someone else, it's cold. There's always someone outdoing you. Yeah? Isn't that self-righteousness anyway? Yeah? That you must do things for God to accept you. Can you see it? That's clearly self-righteousness. You're trying to get accepted by God through what you do. Hmm? That's the opposite of the gospel. That's old covenant. In the new covenant, we are accepted in the beloved by what Christ has done. This is a fact. Another problem with this is Jesus says that I would rather you are hot or cold. Verse 15. I know you are dead, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you are cold or hot. He wishes that you are either cold or hot. If you reason that hot means performance, that you are doing stuff for God, you know, that you, are, you have passion for God, if that's your thinking of hot, it's better that you are lukewarm. At least you are trying. You know, you are performing something. Sometimes you fail. Sometimes you try, but you fail, right? Hmm? But you are lukewarm. You are trying. But if you are cold, you are not even trying. You are not interested. You have no passion for God. But he says it's better that than being lukewarm. Hmm? Can you see? Yeah. The argument fails. cut the long story short to be hot means to be a believer or to be under the new covenant and to be cold means to be completely under the law either you are hot a new covenant christian or you are cold which is an unbelieving jew right there is no middle ground and that's the seriousness of this text here yeah? there's no middle ground jesus warns against mixture and this is a warning against mixture um, we see Jesus one against mixture saying, um, you cannot put old wine into new wineskins, you will lose both. Neither can you put new wine into old wineskins. You try mix the new covenant and the old covenant, there's no power in it and there's no fruit in it. Um, Paul does want the Galatians, right? The problem with the Galatians was they were mixing law and grace. Yeah, They started with grace, they started with Jesus plus nothing, 
and somehow they ended up with Jesus plus um, maybe circumcision and um, let's not eat this food. Jesus can work with someone in the new covenant. Yeah, that means you're hot. Jesus can work with someone in the old covenant. Um, the law, yeah, that means you're cold because the law points you to Christ. That is the purpose of the law. Um, look at Galatians 3 verse 24. Therefore, the law has become our tutor to lead us to Christ so that we, we may be justified by faith. Yeah. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. The purpose of the law is to push you to Christ. That was Jesus' ministry, actually. He put the law on another level. Remember when he said, um, you have heard it says that you should not commit adultery, right? But he says, even if you look at a woman with lust, you've committed adultery. That's the law. Jesus was the greatest preacher of the law. He was the hardest law preacher and the last one at that, by the way. So what was Jesus doing? He was using the law, putting it to its highest standard so people can see, ah, we can't, we need help, we need a savior. And Jesus is that savior. So that is the purpose of the law. And that is why Jesus can work with someone who is cold. Yeah? Someone who is cold, someone under the old covenant. And if the guy is honest, the law will condemn him. And he says, I need a savior. And Jesus will be there. So the problem was not that um, they were complacent or they didn't have fire for God. No, the problem was they were trying to achieve righteousness apart from Christ. They're trying to achieve righteousness apart from the gold that Jesus gives. They were trying to achieve righteousness apart from the white garments from Jesus, right? And that was their problem. The problem of mixture. It gives you a sense that um, that you're okay with God because you're not sinning as much as the other guy. So you are good. Yeah. You don't really need all of Jesus. You can just have a part of him, maybe for confessing sin sometimes. But you don't need all of him because, you know, you're doing pretty well. And that's a very dangerous thing. That's a very dangerous thing. You have no righteousness of your own apart from Christ. Christ is our righteousness. All right, so I think we're done with this. Um, you understand what lukewarm means? Yeah, it means to mix law and grace. Then you are lukewarm and uh, you cannot be helped. You are probably in the worst place imaginable, right? Um, so that's what it means. It's not about you having passion and fire for God and all that. No, it's nothing like that. I'm going to leave you with links to good articles on this from Escape to Reality by Paul Ellis. And I'm also going to link to you the video by Andrew Fali. He has a hot spots video on this. So yeah, check it out. You gotta stay on fire. I'll have them all in the link below. And yeah, so that's it from me. That's it from me. Thank you guys. You're the best audience and uh, remain in grace, my friends. See you next week, alright? Yes. <laughs>